Okay, so now I'm hoping to finish my black logo cutout. I was able to, to bring in my image sketch from behind. I had somehow changed that and uh, changed its format. So I had to bring it in again from my sketch, which is just a reminder, you want to keep all your files organized so that you have those features to use when things happen. And now what I'm going to do is take my large vector path here and take its opacity down to about 50% so I can see what I still have to cut out. Now I'm going to lock everything so that I can make new shapes on top to cut out. And I'm going to ignore the little shapes for now because those will be black shapes. And instead, I'm going to start with an ellipse, so a shape tool, instead of drawing everything with just the pen. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And this just gives me really efficient anchor points. So that ellipse is just made with four anchor points. But I can always add my own, keep it a little bit more efficient. Add my own. Maybe even turn them into straights. Change the angle of the curves. If I hold down shift, I can keep the angle of the curve stand standard, but I can change the size on both sides of the curve handles. They're called the Bezier handles. Like so. I can stretch it. And I'm really kind of defining the opening of my glasses here. And I can flatten the top. Looks pretty flat. Then I can take the whole thing and squish it a little bit and use my arrow keys to nudge it down. And I can always take the opacity of it down and see how I'm doing with the shape. So I don't want my glasses, the rim of my glasses to be too thin, even if I think it looks good up close, because I need this to still read as a clear vector graphic. So it's a mix of playing with the overall shape by transforming it and the individual anchor points by moving them around and playing with the different curves. Try to keep it nice and clean. If I use command, I can change the angle and the distance of the curve. So I turned an ellipse tool into a pretty complicated shape that meets my needs um, with as few anchor points as possible. And now I need to add in this curve. So I'm going to plot new anchor points where that curve begins, bring down the center, that anchor point locks that, so I don't need to worry about that changing. And then I can use command 
to isolate each angle here or keep it flat on the bottom, which works pretty well. But then use command to isolate the inside angle of each curve and basically turn it into a straight just on one side so that the curve is very even. So you can build up your complex shapes, you know, just little by little. You have to understand all these components that are making it. So remember, curves are can be outputted from both sides. Or maybe I want to bring this in a little bit. OK. So now I'm going to select that shape and unlock and select the overall shape by holding down Shift. So selected, selected, and then I'm able to subtract one from the other and cut that shape out so that my glasses look like that. I think that works. So let's do it again. And instead of um, reinventing that shape, what I can do is do Command Z back to before I subtracted it, select that shape, do Command C and then Command V to paste it, flip it horizontally, and move it over to this side. And then while I'm still just using the transform functions, I can try to get it close, and that's going to save me some time. And then I can isolate it to its anchor points and then just move the existing anchor points, not adding new ones unless I really need to. Because it's nice when logos have a little bit of commonality too. What do I mean by that? I mean that there's kind of predictable shapes being used over and over again. It gives a sense of unity to the whole design. And here I'm actually going to add an anchor point, pull this up, and play with the curve just on this one side. But I think that's, yeah, a little bit more complicated than it looks because of this curve. So what I want to do is bring that back all the way, and then play with that curve. Maybe flatten these out. All right. Remember to to pan. You want to hold down space bar while you do it. I wonder if here is a ah, panning is very slow. I'm wondering if this anchor point is a good example of where I can use a straight and then just round it. But that does limit it somewhat. So go back to what I had and keep working with the curves. Using shift to isolate them on both sides. Tweak the angles a little bit. And there's no substitute for just 
practicing it for yourself. To figure out what works. And how few anchor points are actually needed. Okay. Oh, this got less than horizontal. So if you want to make a straight on one side and a curve on the other of the anchor point, you have to use command whoops, as you bring the anchor point to its base. And then I can flatten that out as a perfect horizontal. OK. So now I can take both of these shapes, select them, holding down Shift, come on. There we go. Select all three and then subtract. And if I still want to edit them, I just have to double click on the inside path like that rather than the outside path. Good. So now I've got all of that. I can go ahead and make that full opacity. Then show my sketch. I just have these little details to finish up. So for the little kind of glare on the glasses, that mark, I'm going to use a rounded rectangle. I'm going to double click it. I'm going to plot right in the middle an anchor, right in the middle an anchor. Again, so that I have as few anchor points as possible. I'm going to move it straight down, just a little bit of the way. Straight down, just a little bit of the way. And then double click to turn it to a curve, double click to turn it to a curve. It gives me a very uniform shape. Then I can angle it and place it. Exactly. Then I can hit Command C, Command V to make a duplicate. And use that commonality on both. So then with the eye, I'm going to use an ellipse tool. Fill that in. And then I haven't used borders anywhere in the design. And we, we saw that borders do transfer out of vector. So I'm going to turn the color off and turn the border on, right? Make the border really thick. And then play with the scale and the overall shape to see if I can, instead of deleting one oval from another oval to see if I can get away with this very standard border shape. I'll go ahead and change that to black. Change these to black. If I turn off the sketch, I can get a sense of if that reads the way I want it to. I think it does. Could probably get away with making it a little bit bigger. And then the thing I don't like about it is that it's a little pinched on the inside, and I'd rather it wasn't so pinched. But that's one way.